thank you. Um, I just want to thank God for um, this privilege to, um, to, to share about his goodness and about his faithfulness. Um, God has indeed been good. He's a great and a mighty God. And um, before I do, I want to read some verses of scripture from Ephesians chapter 2. And you were dead in your trespasses, in the sins in which you once walked, following the course of this world, following the prince of the power of the air, the spirit that is now at work in the sons of disobedience, among whom we all once lived in passion of our flesh, carrying out the desires of our body and the mind, and were by nature children of wrath, like the rest of mankind. But God, being rich in mercy, because of the great love with which he loved us, even when we were dead in our tres trespasses, made us alive together with Christ. <coughs> by grace you have been saved and risen up with him and seated us with him in the heavenly places in Christ Jesus, so that in the coming ages he might show the immeasurable riches of his grace in kindness towards us in Christ Jesus. For by grace you have been saved through faith, and this is not your own doing. It is the gift of God, not as a result of works, so that no man may boast, for we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus for the good works which God prepared beforehand that we should walk in them. Amen. 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 Um, like I've been introduced, my name is Noble, Noble Roberts. I'm from Gambia, that is West Africa. Um, I'm married. I'm with my wife is Lydia. I have two kids, Zachariah and Princess. And I became Christian about 10 years ago in the States. After I finished my high school, my parents sent me to the States to study. I was supposed to be studying law but the law got on the other side. <laughs> um, I started university for a year. After, and within my first year, I got involved with um, some friends and I started smoking marijuana, started drinking. So as time went on, I, I quit. I'm, I'm going to university because um, I started now selling marijuana to, um, to keep up my habit. I smoked a whole lot. So I was working in a restaurant. So what I'll do is that I'll go and buy marijuana and take it to the work to my work and sell so I can have more money to smoke some more. So after I've, I was involved in that for some for some months, then I met a, a guy that we get, became very close and um, we began to sell crack cocaine. So I was living in Virginia and would travel to New York to the Colombians and the Cubans up there and we'll take some firearms um, to New York and to the Cubans and they'll give us um, crack uh, cocaine. We come back down south and, and cook it up to crack. So um, I was involved in this lifestyle for many years and now reflecting back, you know, I, I, I want to point out the goodness of God you know, throughout that whole time that shows that God's hand was upon me and that he was securing me for a purpose. Now, you know the drug game that um, in States you have, um, you have um, the people that rob drug dealers. You have the fiends out there. So, <laughs> so what was happening is that um, we had the crack house now so that we, have, um, we, we run it in a strip. So that our oppositions, what, what happened is that they will run up on us and shoot up the crack house because they were, 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 were competing within the streets. But what happens is that anytime they come up to shoot up the crack house, it would have been that I just left. Anytime they shoot it up, it has been that I'm just coming in. And I'll be like, look, they just run down the crack house. Now, I really don't know what was going on. I remember once I met a girl at the place I was working in. She was a Christian, but um, I wanted to get down with her though. So, um, but she was, she, she, was, she was also trying to get me to church. You know, so she would call me, I'll call her, but at the end of the day, when she began speaking about church, I said no. You know, because I hated anything that sounds churchy. 
Now, I hated anything that is proper, you know. Like, I hated, I, I wouldn't dress like this. We said that that's too proper. You know, I hated everything that sounds proper to people. So the, the way we live, we live everything in a way that is contrary to what everyone does. I remember one night I came from the crack house. About midnight, I got home and Finn called me. He needed a half, half an ounce of, of, of crack. I picked it up, called a cab. As I got on the cab, going to drop it, the police run up behind me. And they know me and I know them. So when the matter I saw them, I told the cab driver, look, pull up in the gas station. When he pulled up in the gas station, the police came right behind me. They stopped the cab and they said that someone just called a cab and, uh, and, and they run out of the cabs and they think it's me. The cab, cab said, no, it cannot be him. He just called me and I just picked him up. So when I looked at them, we know each other. And I was having a gun in my waistline. And I have a key, I have half an ounce of, um, of coke in my pocket. And the police were standing there. And they said, now I should get out of the car so we'll talk. So as I began to, you know, those days we wear those um, saggy trousers. So. so as I began to get out of the car, the gun began to drop. <laughs> so so I, I tried to pull it up. It wouldn't go up. So I walked with the police and we came under, um, it was nice, so under the light within the gas station. So we stood there, three of them, ununiformed, were standing there. And I was standing with, the, with them. The gun is a Glock. Even anyone with a Glock is, is very big. The Glock was right here. And I was standing, and the three of them were standing there. And I was, I was like, I said, look, if these people see this gun, they're going to shoot me. And so I was trying to take up a gun. So I said, let me take a run. So I'm just standing there, just, just thinking of what to do. But in it, I, I just said, okay, let me just stand. They just said, okay, you can go back. It is not you. But they whispered said that we will get you. You know, it's a miracle that they didn't see that gun. I went back into the car, dropped the gun, took the crack, and just dashed it away. You know, many, many incidents that we wouldn't go in detail that I, I can see that God has been faithful. God had kept me. So it came to a point in time in 1996. So it was like a drought. There was not much crack running and cocaine coming down. So the whole street was dry. So we didn't sell from the beginning of that year until up, up to March. So come March, we're running down on money, you know, no much, you know, the selling drugs, you use all the money to um, buy clothes and you know, sponsor women and all of that. So um, we're running low on money. So I said to my friend, look, let us go up to New York. Let us pick up some stuff, come and re-up. So I was saying to myself, look, I just do this last run. But we're getting very hot. You know, the, the, the police, they knew they were running, but they couldn't. So I said, let us do this last run, make this dough, go up to North Carolina, and start a new life. But that was the last day. We got, we, 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 we called, get a, get a, got a, um, a car, and got a, one of these white girls got in the car to drive us to New York, nine hours. We got to New York, took the guns with us, pick up, um, dropped the guns, pick up the coke, about five keys, it was coming down. On our way across the Harlem Tunnel, immediately we came out of the Harlem Tunnel, the police came up. It had been that we were smoking weed in the car already. So, but they didn't have any reason to stop, to, stop us. But when they stopped us, they said we can smell marijuana here, so get out of the search. We, we, um, we, we got out of the car, they got in, and they searched and they said, because we had given the girl some of the coke, she put her in the pants, we put some of the coke, so they searched the car, they didn't see anything. So they came up to me and they searched me down and they find a gun, because there was a gun that I had on my Glock. When we went to New York, the guys, the, the, the money that they wanted to give me for the Glock, I felt it was too low. So I said, I will take it back with me. So when they came, when they saw that, they made they saw the gun, they said that, hands up. So, so the, the police said, say that, run, run, we we'll shoot you, just run. So we stood there in the search and they find all of the cocaine and it was, it was a nightmare. It was like the end of the world has just come in. They took us down to the station and um, put, um, put, put some bail on us and at the end of the day, 
I ended up being in the prison for six months before going to court because they denied me bail. And all of my people down south, no one turned up to stand up for me. Girlfriends, friends, and everyone turned their back on me. So it was at that point that I began to, you know, to search. You know, because you know, no, one, no one could stand for me, no one could help me out. I had money on the streets. My girlfriend, at the end of the day, got with one of my friends. He impregnated her, spending my money out on the streets. <laughs> So it was like everyone and everything had just turned their back on me. 